Hello, it's so good to see you again in Culture Mosaic. You're here with me, Lenning. So stay here with me for the next 30 minutes of the show to get yourself updated to the latest cultural news happening around the country. We're now starting off with the headlines. First, we'll discover the novelty colors on the Vietnamese traditional Zaw paper. Later, we'll talk to Masa Sumide, one of the best solo acoustic guitarists in Japan, about his personal quest for excellence. And last but not least, let's see how Italian fashion exhibits connects Vietnamese and Italian young designers. Let's go check out some cultural highlights of the past week in our local news. As part of the Vietnamese Film Week in the U.S., director Liu Chong Ning's Khát Vọng Thăng Long or Thăng Long's Aspiration was screened in New York City. Now, the movie garnered much attention from overseas Vietnamese as well as Vietnamese culture experts in New York. Now, during the week, six Vietnamese films were screened, including Black Knights, Thăng Long Aspiration, The Children of the Village, Scandal, Scandal 2, and Jackpot. The event aimed to mark the 20th anniversary of the normalization of relations between the United States and Vietnam. This was a chance to promote Vietnam's film, culture and tourism to people in the U.S. and for filmmakers to exchange experience and seek partnership for the future. Having been stored overseas for several years, works by some of the most famous Vietnamese painters such as Nguyen Niem and Bui Xuân Phai have recently been exhibited in Hanoi. The existence of the paintings was almost unknown as they were taken abroad right after being completed. For the first time, Vietnamese art lovers had the chance to admire these pieces, so we have more to follow. Several years ago, painter Van Zeng Thanh had the chance to befriend her famous predecessors, Bui Xuân Phai, Nguyen Tư Nghiêm and Van Cao. She was presented with their work as gifts. Thanh then moved abroad for many years, taking the paintings along with her. Today, upon her return, Thanh brought some of them back to introduce to the Vietnamese public. Những tác phẩm đấy thường là phải vào Viện Louvre hoặc là Viện Bảo Tàng Quốc gia của các nước thì người dân mới được xem. Vậy thì làm sao mà các em nhỏ và những người bình dị ở quê mình cũng có thể tiếp xúc được? These masterpieces are often sought after by collectors. Many of them were taken abroad. Meanwhile, museums have too few works on display by Vietnam's master painters. Tác phẩm của họ thì thực sự là tôi cho là cũng là một cái thiệt thòi lớn bởi vì gần như là tranh của họ gần đây ở trong nước còn còn rất là ít. Taking these masterpieces to foreign countries exposes the world to Vietnamese art. However, it is also a loss for art lovers at home. Ấy danh họa nổi tiếng của của người Việt á thì làm thế nào thực sự nó không chỉ là cái vấn đề lưu giữ ở trong bảo tàng mỹ thuật quốc gia mà nó còn làm thế nào để cái sự ảnh hưởng từ nghệ thuật của các ông nó lan tỏa rộng hơn không chỉ là trong cái công chúng mà trong những cái thế hệ nghệ sĩ trẻ hơn đến sau này. According to experts, it will be much harder for Vietnamese art collectors to purchase these paintings from foreign countries due to higher prices. Moreover, not every collector is willing to lend or return the works to their homeland. Vietnamese classical tuong drama used to be a significant mainstream art hundreds of years ago. The performances are almost entirely characterized through the emotion of characters being expressed through the masks painted directly on actors' faces. According to Tuong's artists, the masks provide more than just support for the acting. It reflects the spirit of the art. Our next report from the center city of Hue takes a closer look. Tuong audiences rarely see the actors without their makeup behind the stage. Actors believe the makeup or the masks are the most important part of the art. Every contour on the actor's face reflects the character's personality. Therefore, the painting requires meticulous attention. Người nào mà mới bước vào nghề thì nhanh lắm là một tiếng đồng hồ. Còn như anh đây thì chỉ ảnh cả là chỉ có là khoảng cỡ nửa tiếng đồng hồ mà thôi. 
A Tuong artist must be both an actor and a professional face painter. He must know how to show the character personality with color tones. For instance, a black face symbolizes steadfastness, a white face evokes precarious fate, and red expresses royalty of the character. The colors must be bold and clear to show character's nature. Phạm Diên, cái phe Phạm Diên là thường có cái màu xám, cái màu cam chẳng hạn. Còn đúng của nó là tùy theo cái khuôn mặt của từng nhân vật. Having worked for a long time in the genre, La Hùng remains passionate about the art. He believes face painting is not only about lines and contours, but creating masterpieces. And through this, the Tuong Max continue to impress audiences that have visited Huế. A series of classical music concerts will be running across major cities in Vietnam in early August. Now this year's agenda will have a strong focus on revolutionary music. Renowned Vietnamese musicians such as saxophonist Chen Mạnh Tuấn, violinist Bùi Công Duy and singer Nhật Thủy will be taking part in the musical extravaganza. Over the past 18 years, the series has played an important role in promoting classical music to the Vietnamese public. Profits made from ticket sales will be used to support talented young Vietnamese musicians. Combining traditional and contemporary materials is now seen as a popular trend in the art of painting. And by utilizing the unique features of Zha paper, which is the traditional material of folk paintings, Vietnamese artists have created inspirational and impressive works. So today we will see how some experienced painters have once again awakened the values of Zha paper in their latest creations. From bark of a native tree, Craftsmen create an extremely thin and porous paper, which is known as Zha paper. No one knows when the paper was created, but it is clear that some hundred year old folk paintings and royal ordinances were created on Zha paper. In the past, Zha paper was used for calligraphy and folk painting. These days, more and more artists are using this unique material for contemporary art. Well, it's really hard to draw a picture on the Zor paper like this because the ink keeps spreading out and I can't control them. I can't even create a particular shape on the Zor paper. So I think now I'm going to meet some experienced painters to learn more about how to paint on the Zor paper. Painter Dương Việt Nam has been using watercolors on Zha paper for several years. Oh, xin chào. Oh, đây đây là cái phòng làm việc. Vâng. He said a good painting is decided by the paper. High quality paper is made powder tree bark with a minimal use of additives. Zor paper is characterized by its absorbency, so wood colors blend in easily. Artists often take advantage of this feature in the paintings. In addition, Zor paper is thin, so once the colors are let down, there's no way to correct them. Vẽ 
phải rất thận trọng khi đặt bút phải cân nhắc rất kỹ đặt cái, nó gọi là cái tương quan nó rất quan trọng cái nào nằm cạnh cái nào màu nào nằm cạnh màu nào đi nhiều lớp màu và tự màu nó tràn nhau nó khô đi nó vẫn mỏng tan tranh giấy gió là gì là nó phải êm nhung nó mềm nó chạy nó mướt ra nó, 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 nó có độ sâu và nó trong vắt Like a painter Dương Việt Nam, Lương Hùng also specialized in gió painting. However, he chooses a classical style which features blacking on the white background. To do this, it is important that the painter can deal with the shades of the blurred black on the paper. Nếu như định định vẽ tăng thêm cái độ đậm thì mình phải đè dần lên, đè dần. Nhưng nó chỉ khó nhất ở cái chỗ là anh vẽ xong này nó vừa nhòe nhưng phải chờ nó khô thì mới biết hiệu quả của nó. Lương Hùng invited me to his first ever exhibition. All the works on display are painted on the paper. paintings, Hung wants to convey a message about the flow of time, and he seems to have done that thanks to the use of Zor paper for his paintings. Nhưng mà khi trên vào giấy gió thì nó biểu tượng rất là nhanh, biểu tượng nó nhòe cho nên tạo ra cái cảm giác về, về cái mốc thời gian mà nó phủ lên đấy. Những cái tranh giấy gió đen trắng đều rất là đẹp, nó đã nó đã thể hiện được cái, 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 cái quan niệm và ý đồ của tác giả. Nhưng mà cũng lại cũng lại rất là tình cảm, những cái sử dụng những cái chỗ trắng, những cái chỗ màu nó chảy thì phải nói là Họa sĩ Lương Hùng đã làm việc rất nhiều. Và... With their creativity, Vietnamese painters are discovering novel ways of using zor paper, and the resurgence of the material is proof of that. Tuning in to Culture Mosaic, our weekly journal featuring the rich cultural diversity of Vietnam and vibrant international cultural events happening in the country. We do hope to become the bridge, connecting artists and the worst with our viewers out there. So don't go away, we have a lot more in this week's instrument coming to you in just a moment. Consider a premier solo guitarist in Japan, Masatsumi Dei just landed in Vietnam last week to attend the 2015 International Fingerstyle Guitar Festival. Now known for his unique one-man band style and melodic compositions, together with skillful fingerstyle techniques, Masatsumi Dei has enthralled audiences and guitar lovers in Hanoi. So let's meet with uh, this special artist in our On The Mic Corner this week. Fingerstyle is a technique of playing the guitar by plucking the strings directly with the fingertips, fingernails, or picks, as opposed to flat picking. Music arranged for fingerstyle playing can include chords, arpeggios, and other elements such as artificial harmonics, hammering on, and pulling off with a fretting hand, using the body of the guitar percussively, and many other techniques. Fingerstyle guitar is a difficult technique but is becoming more trendy amongst guitarists around the world. On July 17, the Vietnamese guitar lovers got the chance to meet one of the world's fingerstyle legends, Masa Sumide. He has long been known as a brilliant groove player and Japan's premier solo guitarist.
So now we have the chance to talk with Mr. Masasumide, a Japanese well-known guitarist in fingerstyle genre. Uh, thank you so much for joining in our program today. Yeah, thanks for having me. My first question is, so what is special about the fingerstyle genre and why do you choose to pick up this kind of practice? Yeah, actually, uh, uh, acoustic guitar and uh, you play without a pick, with your fingers. Yeah, so it's simply called finger style guitar. Now, of course, I, we, I use a pick uh, when, I, when I jam with some other guys, but mostly I play without any picks, only fingers. Of course, like simply, simple, you know, picking technique, or like some other percussive stuff, like. like Like funk, funky stuff, and and at the same time, like like putting some percussion stuff. So when and how did you become first interested in guitar? When I first picked up the guitar, I was 12 years old, I think. After listening to the music of the Ventures, American uh, instrumental band called the Ventures, and uh, it hit me uh, like a ton of bricks, you know. Like, like someone hit me with, with a ton of bricks. <laughs> so ever since I've been playing the guitar. But uh, solo guitar, when it comes to solo guitar, I, I started late, like when I turned 40. So does anyone in your family play guitar or any other kind of instruments? Yeah, my dad used to, uh, uh, he used to sing and he used to play a, a violin. I don't know why. And my mom still loves singing. Mm -hmm. So you can say music uh, is in my blood. Yeah, runs in the family. Masa Sumire was born on February 3rd, 1956 in the Kyoto Prefecture of Japan. Masa was 12 years old when the electric sound of the ventures had an indelible impact on him and he came to realize the pleasure of guitar music. In his high school days, Masa's musical taste changed to something with a harder edge, and he spent most of his time listening to hard rock music like Deep Purple, Grand Funk Railway, and Led Zeppelin. From 1974 to 1995, he joined several bands and played backup for various famous artists before positioning himself as a solo acoustic guitarist. So I know that you have been playing band before, but eventually you decided to become a solo acoustic guitarist. So why is that? I, I love working with bands, you know, but, but I'm, how to say it? I, I, I don't feel like, uh, even though I, I'm playing solo, uh, like solo guitar, I don't feel alone. You know what I mean? Because I hear, when I play solo guitar music, I hear lots of sounds like the drama, the pianist, sax player. So I, didn't know, I don't need a band, actually. And I may be, I'm, I may be too uh, selfish, or I, I don't know, is the right word, or, yeah? I, I'd rather be alone. Okay. Yeah, that, that doesn't mean I don't work well with, you know, sure. bonds. Since 1995, Masa Sumire has become well-known around the world as one of the best fingerstyle guitarists. His work breaks all borders and has reached many countries and territories, including the United States, Canada, the Republic of Korea, and Taiwan. Masa is famous for his magical performances. His repertoire can run from jaw-dropping funky tunes to sophisticated yet accessible jazzy, bluesy grooves along with ballads that are sure to touch the soul. So can you share with us some of the unforgettable memories when you practice uh, playing guitar? Yeah, when I, when I migrated to Australia uh, in 1996, uh, I didn't know, I didn't play any solo guitar music pieces at that time, so I had to uh, start from scratch in the true sense of the word 
And then I, uh, I decided to practice, like put in uh, 10 hours a day, every day, every day. I mean every day, without fail. So uh, I, I'm really proud of myself, you know, having that kind of patience and having that persistence. So I, uh, yeah, my, my fingers got bloody at one point. Uh, I couldn't play because of my wrist, you know, started hurting. Yet I, 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 I was playing like hell. Masa was invited as one of the six artists to the International Fingerstyle Guitar Festival this year. This is the first time he has performed in Vietnam, and he has captivated many guitar lovers in Hanoi. I think he's called a master for a very good reason. He's an amazing guitarist, he's got an incredible sound. And I think they call him the King of Groove. I think it's a well-earned name, he sounds amazing. So, a beautiful guitarist. Mình thấy Masasumire lần này truyền diễn một phong cách rất là mạnh mẽ và truyền được cảm hứng cho người xem bất kể đấy là những người đã từng chơi, từng nghe hay là chưa từng biết đến dòng nhạc finger style này và không chỉ vậy mà dù cách chơi có mạnh mẽ, phóng khoáng đến đâu nhưng vẫn có ẩn chứa dòng đấy sự thanh lịch. Finger style guitar is the newest genre of solo guitar music here in Vietnam. An entire band is replaced by only one performer. The International Fingerstyle Guitar Festival has been an annual event since 2010. And this year, the festival will be held throughout July in the Republic of Korea, China, Taiwan, Vietnam and Malaysia. So what is your impressions about the International Fingerstyle Guitar Festival that is being held this year in Vietnam? Yeah, actually, I, I, uh, I don't mean to be disrespectful at all, but I, I don't know much about the guitar scene here. So I'm really looking forward to uh, what kind of reaction I'd get tonight. And uh, maybe today, tonight is the starting point, I think. I hope it will be the starting point for us or for you or for any guitar lovers living in Hanoi or Ho Chi Minh or Vietnam. Yeah. So do you have any plans in the near future? I, I, I'm more like uh, take each day, you know, one step at a time, one step at a day kind of guy. So uh, yeah, today is the most important time. Of uh, thank you so much again for joining in our interview today and we wish you all the best in your future plans. In the past few days, Hanoi audiences have had a chance to enjoy Italian outstanding culture in a film week and fashion exhibit held in the capital city. Now, on this occasion, clothing by Italy's leading designers as well as capsule collections by young designers from both Italy and Vietnam are also introduced. Let's see how these young designers are provided with further international exposure in connecting culture this week. Black Souls Fasten your seat belts. The chair of happiness. I can quit whenever I want. And Wondrous Mocasio are among the Italian movies have been screened to the public in Hanoi. <laughs> This is also the first time an international film festival has combined cinematography and fashion in Vietnam. Especially, these movies inspired artworks being showcased at the event. what the society is all about, what are the challenges, what are the problems, but also the successes. It is a journey uh, that we like to take you to, uh, through two of the best expressions of the Italian creativity. On the one hand, movies, on the other hand, fashion. 
On the sidelines of the festival, an exhibition showcasing the outfits created by young Vietnamese and Italian designers is also being held. The fashion exhibition is titled The Elegance of Culinary Art, Tales About Food and Fashion, with the idea of the Italy-Vietnam Fashion Council. The exhibition is a visual demonstration of a delicate mix of trending themes such as nutrition and sustainability. This is also a new source of creativity for promising young Vietnamese designers like Hung Viet. Tôi đã sử dụng cái chất liệu vỏ chai, cái con chai đó chính là một cái thực phẩm tự nhiên để tái chế lại để làm nên những cái bộ trang phục à, để kết hợp giữa à, thực phẩm thời trang và à, sự phát triển bền vững. The audience will also be introduced to costumes adopt natural couture by nature-loving designer Tiziano Gardini, also based on gastronomy and sustainable energy. And join together the um, natural material and the haute couture technique. I wanted to, to remain the, the color for the nature to express that, that uh, we can live in harmony with the nature. Họ đã tạo nên một bộ sưu tập rất là đẹp và rất ý nghĩa uh, nhấn mạnh về tầm quan trọng của ẩm thực và các loại vật liệu thiên nhiên như là cây tùng, uh, sợi tơ. The Italy Vietnam Fashion Council has also launched a master class to give young fashion enthusiasts experience of the industry. Here, both host and guests had a chance to share initiatives and efforts to connect the two countries' fashion industries. Những nhà thiết kế trẻ của Ý đến Việt Nam, họ rất ngạc nhiên bởi vì tại sao ở Việt Nam có quá nhiều những cái chất liệu đẹp và quý dành cho thời trang, thậm chí là thời trang cao cấp, và họ rất mong muốn khám phá. Thế nhưng mà các nhà thiết kế trẻ của Việt Nam thì họ cũng không có những cái điều kiện để tiếp cận. We have invited here today many leading and young Italian designers to share their experience with Vietnam. As Italian fashion is well known for its excellent materials, such as sale together with high skill tailoring techniques. Long hopes the festival will enhance cooperation between Vietnam and Italy. And more importantly, young Vietnamese designers now have a better chance to further their international exposure and learn more about new professional manufacturing processes from a leading country like Italy. This has just concluded this edition of Culture Mosaic. Feel free to write to it at culturemosaic at vtv.vn with your comments and suggestions for the show. Now, repeats of our programs are online at vtv4.vn or youtube.com slash vtv4go. Remember to join us next week for more culture updates. This is Lenning and goodbye for now.